the Exponential Medicine Conference, and we thought maybe we'd bring a special treat uh, for someone who really has inspired a lot of the exponential uh, work that we've seen in technology and in healthcare. So I've had the privilege of uh, becoming uh, friends with uh, someone by the name of Martin Cooper, uh, known as Marty Cooper. And he is the individual who, while at Motorola, invented the cell phone. So if there's one exponential that we all rely on in healthcare, uh, the cell phone is certainly um, the, 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 the leading uh, candidate for what has catalyzed so much of what we're doing today. So um, uh, Daniel, if you want to bring Marty on out. Marty. Thank you, Daniel. The exponential. Here. So, um, Mark, <coughs> uh, we've had many conversations about his early pioneering work in uh, building the team that uh, created the cell phone. And one of the first things that uh, he thought of as, as he was realizing the dream, and he talks a lot about dreaming as a core part of innovation, um, was what a huge impact the cell phone would have on, on healthcare. So Marty, I'd love to uh, hear you describe a little bit about some of your early thoughts as you were um, building out the team and building out the product and bringing it, bringing it to scale. Well, John, uh, you know, in, inventing the cell phone was pretty easy. Uh, getting people to accept that this is the way yeah. the, of the future was much harder uh, because our biggest problem was uh, trying to convince the world that the monopolies are bad. You would think everybody would know that, right? Uh, and and uh, convincing the world of a really important thing, and that is that people are mobile. They're fundamentally, naturally mobile. And, and uh, that cord that ties us to the communications path is a very bad thing. But once you do that, once you cut that cord, uh, you realize how important freedom is. And that freedom uh, it solves a lot of problems. Uh, of course, medicine is a crucial issue, but uh, uh, it also does a lot for uh, uh, education. Absolutely. Uh, uh, it does a lot for the whole concept of collaboration. In fact, I wonder, Daniel, why it is that we are all meeting here in this room when we all have the ability to be connected all the time, wherever we are, without getting on an airplane. So you ought to work on that a little bit. We're working on that. I mean, our digital avatar, work from Shafi Ahmed and others, we can all be in virtual environments and interact and feel like we're even face to face. So I and have a question. Wait, wait, and you're being live streamed globally right yes, now. Yes, this is oh, our yeah. virtual. Yes, so yeah. a lot of virtual participants. So I grew up on a rotary phone. I, I still remember my, my rotary phone. I you didn't get a cell old. phone until I was a resident at Mass General Hospital in my 20s. And some of us, it's hard to imagine that world from before. When you first came up with the idea and putting together the first mobile phone, did you imagine what it could do and what it might be even 10 or 20 or 30 years later? You don't, uh, you really don't appreciate how old I am. Mm. Because when we created the first phone, there were no personal computers, there were no cordless phones. Uh, I mean, it was really uh, ancient times. So no, I did not. Uh, anticipate all these things. We understood how important it was for people to be free, but only when the phone got married up to a computer right. did we realize what the potential was. And, and even today, the things that are most important to me in, in the medical area are what are happening uh, not with the super smartphones and, and in uh, highly advanced areas, what's going on in places like Mexico and India where people are using feature phones, simple phones with very uh, simple add-ons to do things like remote diagnosis. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, uh, including eyes. Uh, there's a, a, a test going on in Mexico uh, where people are doing ultrasounds on pregnant women. So uh, uh, those things are the things that really inspire me, that are, that are really changing the world because there are masses of people. The whole issue of what's going on uh, in Africa, I don't know if you're aware of the fact that uh, 1.2 billion people have moved out of poverty in the last 20 years, and the cell phone was a, a, a Critical. important Absolutely. Uh, uh, issue in that. And so. I, I just got back from a trip to India not that long ago. 
And when you refer, refer to healthcare in developing countries and disadvantaged access to healthcare, there are large uh, portions of India and Africa and other parts of the world where there is no healthcare except what they can access on their cell phone. So it's not an adjunct, it is the centerpiece of what access they do have to healthcare in the most rural parts of uh, uh, many of the developing countries in the world. So it, it, you're absolutely right profound impact. Yeah, I mean, I think we opened up the whole exponential medicine conference that the phone is really becoming the core diagnostic, therapeutic information uh, platform. So I have a question. When you were starting the cell phone project, um, what, what, what was your mindset and what did you learn in catalyzing this incredible exponential growth in that journey from, I think, something that you have right here that's now in almost everybody's pocket? Yeah, well, we always show it to everybody. Uh, you don't appreciate uh, the technology that goes into a cell phone. <laughs> that is the, an exact model of the very first phone. And did you have that Alexander Graham Bell moment where you got to make the very first call? Oh, well, my, the uh, only thing I thought about when we made that first call, is this thing going to work? <laughs> you know, because this thing had thousands of, of discrete parts in it. You know, today we have a, things called integrated circuits that solve those uh, problems. No, our uh, challenge at that time was not the technology, because we knew about the technology. We've been building two-way radios that were portable, and we realized there were businesses that couldn't operate without the, but the uh, challenge was that uh, AT&T, the old AT&T, uh, the, the monopoly. Before the break. Uh, uh, yeah. Their vision of cellular was car telephones. Could you imagine? For, you know, for 100 years, uh, we had been uh, trapped uh, with that wire in our offices and homes, and now they were going to trap us in our cars. So uh, we objected to that uh, very seriously. Uh, we objected to the fact that there was a monopoly going to run this thing in the first place. So that was the big challenge. The technology was fun. So you're doing some new projects now. What, what would you like the exponential medicine community and others to know about what you're doing next? And any sort of gleaned lessons in taking something from, you know, from something that looks pretty basic to something that seems magical? Sure. Well, the biggest problem today is that uh, everybody in this room has access. Uh, there is one person in this room who doesn't have a cell phone because there's always an outlier. But uh, uh, everybody in our culture has cell phones. There are millions of people in the United States that don't have access to either cell phones or uh, cell phone service or broadband. And we have to fix that. Uh, and somehow uh, our emphasis is not in there. We keep talking about 5G. Uh, everybody here about 5G, everything you've heard about 5G is wrong. Uh, 5G is not millimeter waves, it's just an incremental improvement. And what 5G should be doing is lowering the cost of cell phones service uh, and increasing the coverage. So these billions of people don't have coverage today, have it. So uh, that, that's what I'm working on at the moment. I'm on an FCC advisory council and trying to get the uh, carriers to put more emphasis uh, on uh, getting everybody to have this service that you keep talking about, John and Daniel, uh, and, uh, and we're making some progress. Awesome. Closing question? Well, and I, I just want to key off of what you just said. Uh, tragically, there's uh, a, one of the most underserved areas uh, in the U.S. in terms of cell coverage is the Native American nations where a lot of remote locations where they can't have access to healthcare because they have to drive miles on the reservation to get a weak signal. Um, so uh, thanks to Marty now, um, the FCC uh, with his uh, advisory role is taking that very seriously and helping bring that coverage um, to every corner of the U.S., including uh, the very first inhabitants of our country, our Native American nations. <laughs> Yeah, well, so, well, you, would you believe that the uh, the ghettos in the big cities have exactly the same problem? So yeah. it's not just the uh, right. uh, early Americans. Right. So soon, cell phone coverage access it should almost be a basic human right. Absolutely, uh, and of course, it's part of the becoming the core of all of healthcare and connectivity. And so uh, we need to improve access and ec um, equity uh, through mobile data uh, and access. Right. So. Um, 
so amazing to have you here. Um, we are uh, uh, improvising here, and we have now decided to award uh, Marty our very first Exponential Medicine Maverick Award. So uh, I wow. want to thank you for, uh, for joining us. <laughs> and uh, wow. can you hear me now? Um, so uh, um, let's thank Marty uh, for all the work he's done. I mean, it's changed all of our lives and really changed healthcare around the planet. And really honored to have him here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What an honor. It, it, I tell you the most uh, interesting thing, it's just most disruptive. Yeah, absolutely. It's the <laughs> nicest compliment I could ever get. Thank you much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Marty.